Okay, on the uh, next uh, lesson now, to, uh, Year 10 Science, we're talking about chemistry. We're in particular talking about how these ionic compounds can react, and sometimes the product is soluble, as in it will dissolve in a liquid, and sometimes it's insoluble, and that's what we refer to as a precipitate. Nice little uh, chemistry joke down the bottom corner there. Your uh, activation energy is too low to precipitate, as in the activation energy is the energy to make the reaction actually occur. If the energy activation energy is too low, it won't work. Anyway, it's a science joke. Think about how you're feeling today. Once again, hopefully you're one of the uh, nicer ones here, not feeling too uh, out of the ordinary. Don't forget, there's our periodic table. We do refer to that quite commonly. Don't forget, we've got the groups, which is the columns and the group numbers, one, two, one through to eight basically tells us the valence electrons and how it's going to react. So today, we're going to look at precipitation, look at a solubility table that we'll need to refer to quite a bit, and predict the products of reactions. Okay, and don't be like boiled water, but although if you are gone, you will be missed. So ions are the charged particles when an atom accepts extra electrons or gives up its electrons to get a full outer shell. And sometimes they can change and react. So in this little scenario here, we have Ag, which is silver, and the NO3, which is a uh, polyatomic ion. It's an ion because it's charged. We know that because it's got the negative charge. Polyatomic means many atoms. We have a nitrogen and we have three oxygens. So there's four atoms that make up that ion. So that's silver nitrate and sodium chloride, normal table salt. These will react together, and basically what you can see they're doing is swapping partners. The silver pairs up with the chlorine, and the sodium pairs up with the nitrate. So we have silver chloride and sodium nitrate. So notice how that worked. I'll just go through them again. Silver nitrate plus sodium chloride reacts to produce sodium nitrate and silver chloride. So we did look at uh, ionic formulas of um, actually some of the formulas from last time as in how we get the, the 2 plus 1 plus 2 negative 1 negative and so on. Now when we talk about precipitation reactions, precipitation is when the ions react, so the cation will react with the anion in an aqueous solution, which just means in water, and it combines to form an insoluble ionic solid. What that means is the anion and the cation react with each other, so the positive and negative ion react, and what they produce is not soluble in water. It will not dissolve in water, and that means it comes out of solution as a solid, like on the bottom of the test tube or something like that. And that's what we refer to as a precipitate. Okay, so if you're not part of the solution, as in if you're not dissolved in the liquid, then you're a precipitate. That's what the little chemistry cat style is. Here's a good example, the reaction of silver nitrate and sodium chloride. So what we have in our, our equation is silver nitrate plus sodium chloride. And it's one of those sort of like double displacement type reactions where the sodium will pair up with the nitrate, sodium nitrate, and the silver pairs up with the chlorine, silver chloride. Okay, now notice that uh, we've specified in brackets there PPT, which is precipitate, or sometimes we just say that it's a solid. In brackets, we just put an S for solid like we did when we were talking about the redox reactions. So here's a nice little example, test tube of silver nitrate. And because it's aqueous, and let's see it says AQ, aqueous, it's dissolved in a liquid, water. It's like the um, silver ions and the nitrate ions can kind of dissociate a bit or split up a bit from each other. Same with um, dissolving salt in water, so, um, sodium chloride in water, the sodium and the chlorine will sort of split up from each other a bit. When they react, you end up with um, the 
sodium chloride and the silver nitrate. Uh, silver chloride and sodium nitrate is what I meant to say. Now, the silver chloride is not soluble in solution, so it precipitates out as a white solid, much like that little test tube there. This is uh, one that tends to sort of float a bit in the water, so hence it's at the top of the test tube. But often you'll see like a, a solid substance, powdery type thing sitting at the bottom of the test tube. That's what the precipitate looks like. It's this solid stuff that's not in the solution. These um, test tubes here just look like test tubes of water because we had those stuff that stuff dissolved in it. So when we finish up, we end up with that white precipitate layer that is not in that wasn't in the solution before. That's how we know we've got a precipitate. Here's another example. We have a solution of silver nitrate, and it just looks like that clear uh, liquid in that beaker there. And we're mixing it with a solution of potassium chromate. It looks like that sort of yellowy sort of liquid. And when we mix those together, okay, you can work out what's going to happen. We're going to have um, the potassium is going to join up with the nitrate. And the silver is going to uh, react and join with the chromate. So what we've got to remember though is the potassium has a 1 plus charge, the nitrate has a 1 negative charge, so that's just a 1 to 1 ratio. However, the silver has a 1 plus charge and the chromate has a 2 negative charge. So we will need 2 silver atoms for every one chromate okay now the thing about this is that's what it shows us just down there so we have um, potassium and nitrate in the solution and that is that yellowy liquid there and we get this solid stuff form this brownie sort of looking thing and that is the silver chromate that's come out of solution and formed as a precipitate and it's kind of like uh, this test tube here is sort of what we're looking at. These all four test tubes there have examples of precipitate reactions. You can see that layer down at the bottom there, that, that powder that formed at the bottom of that one. This um, uh, chromate reaction here is basically that type of thing there where you see that solid stuff start to form in the solution. So what we're going to do is follow, like Mr. Uh, Mr. T says, follow the rules, follow the solubility rules. Uh, and it's basically a table that we look up to tell us whether the um, results that we get from a reaction are going to be soluble or are going to form a precipitate because they're insoluble. So not all aqueous reactions form precipitates, so we consult the solubility rules before we determine the state of the products and to write our equation for the reaction because that's what we'll end up doing. We'll be given um, examples of what's going to react, and we have to write the reaction and work out whether the, the products are solid precipitates or not. So there's a nice video for you to check out. I'll put the link again in the description below. Have a go at that one. And this is basically our solubility rules, our solubility table. You need to have this, and you'll be given this in your exam, because it'll tell us what's going to happen. Anything that's reacting with a nitrate, which is NO3, is basically going to be soluble. Whereas we look at, um, say, sulfide or hydroxide. Hydroxide's a good one. So when hydroxide reacts with hydrogen, what do we end up having? We end up having two hydrogens and an oxygen. Is that soluble in water? Yeah, obviously, because it is water. Okay, if we look at um, the next one, which is ammonia. Ammonia is like that strong smelling stuff in oven cleaner. NH4 plus with an OH minus. So they'll go together one to one. That is soluble. Any of these ones are going to be soluble. But if you've got a reaction of things and it has the hydroxide ion in it and it's not one of those, it's going to be insoluble. And that's how you know it's going to be a precipitate. If we look at reactions with the phosphate group, the carbonate group, or the sulfite group, if any of them are reacting with hydrogen or NH4, which is ammonia, 
it will be soluble. Everything else is going to be insoluble, which means it's going to be a precipitate. So we're going to work through some documents here. Um, you've got chapter 5.3 review questions to check out to have a look at with the um, solubility rules. Don't forget to follow that table that was on the previous slide. You must do it just like Master Yoda says. That table there is what I'm referring to. So check out 5.3 review. And we have questions like this. I encourage you to pause the video. Look at those questions. There's only six of them. Have a go at answering those questions. Have a think about what we learned today. The main thing, main takeaway point is we have our solubility table that we will need for all of these um, equations that we're trying to work out, and you will be using it in your exam at the end of this unit. Next lesson, we'll have a look, look at a uh, practical activity. Okay. Thanks for coming today.